Hey everybody, it's EJ here from iDesign.com. We are on the show floor at NAB 2017. And for those of you on the YouTube channel, this is the Octane Man himself, David Ariev. So, the Octane Man himself. I'm one of man. many Octane Men. But like you the are, Brograph guys are also Octane. You're Octane Octane Man, but Octane guys, yeah. you're the guy at least people know that are getting into it on Sweet. the iDesign YouTube channel. So let's just talk a little bit about how long have you been using Octane and and why do you love it so dang much? You're obsessed. Why do I love it so dang? I've been using Octane since 2013, when I did like a Dave Matthews Band music video. Um, a, a lot of it was actually Element 3D for like the backgrounds, because at the time I didn't know how to use Octane that well. And like I used Octane for like the hero building, uh, and I first got into it, and it didn't look that great. But I've been using it for several years and getting into it slowly. And it's probably out of all the things that I know, I feel like I know Octane the best. Cause I'm just, I don't know, I'm just obsessed with it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so you recently finished up that uh, space music space video, space. space based music video that you broke down in one of the previous tutorials. So uh, why don't you talk about that and like what was, uh, did you have any like realizations of like, wow, this is really cool. You figured out something while you were working on that? Yeah, so I think the things I got better at uh, the most were like lighting, just like backlighting everything. And I like that was the most fun part of the process for me. It was really like being able to art direct in real time, the light. And um, yeah, so, so that. And then I, the other thing I think I got better at was um, using things like uh, Octane's displacement for sure to get like those moon textures. And then also Octane's scatter really allowed me to create those cool asteroid belts. Um, and it just allows you to create so many instances, like tens of, you know, millions and millions of instances, literally, uh, to create like that complexity. And then also uh, Octane volumetrics, like bringing in that fog volume, that was a whole section of the video that was cool. Um, and just, yeah, just creating kind of new, uh, better looking imagery for cheaper and faster with Octane, yeah. So that, so that scatter, that, I didn't re even know that that existed until you did that uh, that breakdown at the Dallas-Fort Worth. Totally. Uh, me of that the program guys put together. Yeah. Uh, if you if we need to do that next year, anyone who hasn't gone, it's a DFWC4D. really fun. DFWC4D. DFWC4D, is that, that's the website, DFWC4D? dfwc4d.com so check that out if you're in the dallas area or texas it's a big state there's a lot of you there uh, go <laughs> check that out uh but yeah. uh the scatter that's like uh the cloner almost but on steroids it's the right? cloner on crack yeah, yeah. totally yeah. yeah so like uh, tell about the differences between the cloner and like what are the strengths of uh, scatter um, so it <clears throat> it doesn't function exactly the same as the cloner like it doesn't exist in its own like grid array or whatever okay. it's more like the clone on object mode so okay. if you've got geo like a torus you can easily clone onto that okay. and then you can add effectors like c4d's default effectors to that so you can then like put a random effector in there spread it out do all that kind of good stuff awesome. um, and then it has but there are some modes that are uh, interesting that are not like the cloner where you can actually add in C4D noise to control the scale of the clones and stuff like that. Maybe that that probably exists for C4D as well, but it's like a really intuitive way to control um, the clones or in scatter. So like for instance, people will go in and create like you'll see people he'll go in and create like a, a city, and then he'll pipe a noise in there to create like variation in the buildings, but not in like this randomized way. In a way where you get like clumps and clusters that look more organic, where like you've got these really tall buildings and then suddenly these really small buildings. So that variation in scale really makes scenes look more interesting. So there are some modes in that scatter that are um, perhaps better than the C4D cloner, but on the whole, it's just the speed and number of instances that you can pipe in there that'll get you that max massive complexity. I got you. All right, so you've been pumping out some tutorials for the site, and yeah, people really are really digging them, fine. getting a lot of good feedback. Yeah, so it's, it's motivating to create more, and it's really gratifying seeing all the feedback for sure. Yeah, there's a lot um, of people out there starting to learn Octane, and not a lot of content out there. A lot of people it's, are it's wanting weird. To like learn. this whole time, I've like wanted to learn more and more about Octane, and the way I've been doing it is just by like literally like scouring the internet. Like it's really like hacked, and you have to like cobble together like, oh, this one dude on this one Vimeo channel. Now scroll down the page and find that one link. Oh, there it is. You know, like, it's hard to find good resources on Octane. There are some dudes out there that are making really quality content, but it's it still feels like the Wild West as far as Octane goes. But that's also exciting. It's kind of like this mysterious thing to some extent still. Even though it's been out for a good, like, what, four or five years now, people are just starting to learn about it, and it's always getting more and more powerful. Um, and it just, like, empowers a solo artist to, you know, like, have their own render farm, basically, have their own, like, really high quality setup, you know, like, yeah. 
So there's that, the one thing that I think the very first uh, YouTube video you put out for the iDesign YouTube channel, you talked about the Octane VR. Yeah, Octane VR, and which is a it, crap name. Doesn't make yeah, any sense whatsoever. Every, like the yeah. most overwhelming comment from that was like, holy crap, I didn't know that they yeah. had like a subscription that was like super cheap, right? So Yeah, it totally saves money. And actually in retrospect, so I've got like three full Octane licenses and three full C4D licenses. And in retrospect, I don't need all of that. I could have a subscription that's only 20 bucks a month for my secondary computer. Like I use Octane on my laptop and for my laptop setup, I've only got one GPU in there. It makes more sense to have the subscription. They should just call it Octane subscription. It makes no freaking sense. But so it's, yeah, that, that's another funny thing is like that really help so many people save money basically yeah so you've been pumping out tutorials for the site people are digging them you got something in mind for the next one you're talking a little bit about displacements yeah so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a two-parter the first part will have like uh, designing an illustrator like a kind of greeble texture like people would do so like just you know creating a techie looking texture and then taking that into octane and using it to displace some geo so in my dead mouse thing that I did I created this tunnel uh, and threw on all of these uh, Tekkit displacement textures from the French Monkey, which is he creates these really cool looking displacement textures. He creates them all in Illustrator. So I'm gonna show how you do create that yourself. So you don't necessarily have to go out and buy that, but that is a really good resource. So I, I would just like use one of those textures by either Beeple or the French Monkey. And then you can animate the amount of displacement to get like a tunnel to like close in and do some interesting stuff. I also did a thing where I just uh, dissolved between different displacement textures and just that simple dissolve can create an animated displacement map. So you can get like these extrusions in this weird looking like animating city just by doing stuff. So I want to do more with like animating displacement textures, with creating your own displacement textures and using them in interesting ways. Yeah. You could make a simple cube look like yeah, the I most just have, complex like, terrible thing. geometry. I don't know how to model worth crap. <laughs> so I'm I like had like a hexagon tunnel that didn't look good at all and then I just like throw in, you know, a displacement texture and it looks like oh it's so complex and cool looking. It's like smart, it's just yeah, cheating. Like, I love cheating is basically what it boils down to. Just displacement, bro. It's just displacement, bro. Yeah. yeah. All right, well everyone out there, uh, <laughs> stay tuned to the YouTube channel because David's going to be kind enough to keep sharing the octane knowledge. Uh, yeah, and they've got the BroGraph guys here as well. They're super into Octane, so yeah, we're all Octane uh, nerds. Yeah, all the Octane nerds. I just use I just it. use Octane for, use the, first for the first time, time? today. Yes. Congratulations! Let one of my Sketch and Tune guys and put nice. some nice shiny plastic textures on it. So good, good. awesome! Well, nice. we're really excited to have you on the channel. Really excited Thanks, for man. the tutorials. You've been killing it. Excited Everyone's to be here. loving it. Cool. And if you guys got any suggestions for tutorials, Octane tutorials for Dave, I'm sure he'd love to hear the suggestions. But uh, thanks so much for coming out, thanks, man. Bro. We'll uh, we'll see you in the next, in the next video here. All right, bye everybody. Bye everybody.